the trivial. I play guitar and do vocals. My name's Adam. I play bass and do vocals. So, what does it mean for you guys to be playing Las Vegas Death Fest in year 11? A lot. Um, I, as a fan of Brutal Death, I actually haven't been able to make it out to this fest once. I, not that I haven't been to others. It was like a Cali Death Fest in 08 that was really sick that had like a Guttural Secrete, Infernal Revulsion, and all these great bands back in the day. And ever since I went to that fest, it was really clear that that was, if there was one place, if you're one of the few people that really gives a shit, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Not like my friends do it and I like the shirts and I go to the thing. It's like if you're, this is really your fucking shit, you know what I mean? Uh, that's the only place you can go and be at home. You know, mm -hmm. Honestly. Like, and I almost forgot that until we played this fucking fest. And I got off stage and dudes were coming up to me and we were just talking about death metal in the sense that I feel like you know, we talked about in our teens a little bit, giving back to death metal, like, like treating death metal like it's something important. Poetry, not, not it has just, depth, it's, not just yeah, music. That we're trying to do something more and um, it's cool. And I, that's among many other reasons why we're excited to be here and the bands that we're sharing the stage was obviously very special to us, but uh, uh, just being a part of that, you know, that's definitely the most special thing about playing this with. Yeah, I really like how uh, the dedicated fan base that comes out to these things. Um, you know, playing local shows, there's always, you know, going to be the hipster crowd that shows up, hangs out at the bar kind of thing. And, uh, uh, but when you come out to a fest like this and it really weeds it out, you get, die -hards. Uh, you get all the diehards, the people that are willing to travel across the country or halfway across the country to, to see these bands. And uh, the reception of Vitriol here has been just fantastic and it's the first time we've played outside the Pacific Northwest yeah. you and, guys uh, killed it it, you, it like you. I yeah yeah it was funny because you know as Mike said he was like where the fuck you know and it was part of that was mainly you know we just kept a really low profile vitriol has been a work in progress for about seven fucking eight years now uh, but it's just uh, it had to be right you know it's like yeah. a lot of bands I think we talk about this a lot where a lot of bands develop in the public eye you know mm -hmm. what I mean like they work it out on their freshman album they give it their best hack on their sophomore maybe by the junior they're like a professional band right and we just never were particularly interested in that formula like we, we just weren't ready to release a record until we thought it could hang you know with the shit that we liked that we listened to so there's just a lot of a lot of fucking groundwork and it's resulted in a really cool effect of you know people just being like where did this fucking come so are you guys really like OCD when it comes to like imperfectionism with the creative process? Like, because um, I know like a lot of bands, they, they focus more on the technical aspects of, oh, well, that, that timing is just slightly off. Let's redo it sure. versus the, the heart and soul of, of the purpose of music. Yeah. I think uh, there's, a, uh, there's a significant amount of the OCD that goes into this, but uh, mostly uh, to sum it up, I would say just zero compromise. There's just no matter how much time i mean we spent six months working on one single song and when it was finally done it was just like that's not our best that's just you know i think a lot of bands would be like well i spent so much time on it it's just not worth throwing it away you know we're willing to just we basically like scrapped a fucking record yeah. for the one we wrote for the you know what i mean it was like which any good band worth exactly. their salt will yeah, do exactly so yeah. to answer your question i think it's both really it's like, yeah, it's, it is a lot of that weird minutia nitpicking, but not from the standpoint of like, let's grid at it and sterilize everything. Yeah. But just from like, it has to be right. And maybe that right is being off. Maybe that right is being a little ahead of the click. Maybe that's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it is, yes, we do definitely get into the weird little nitty gritty and, and obsess over those things, but um, not in a way where we're like, snapping shit to fucking grids. Oh, this is what the commercial industry wants, so this is what they want. Yeah, there's a great attitude to this band, and, uh, you know, many times Kyle and I track each other, and it's just like, uh, all the notes are there, they're all in perfect time, like, the riff, you, you nailed it, but it's just not the one. There's a certain feel, there's a certain vibe, there's a certain intensity that just hasn't been captured yet, and so we'll do it over and over and over until we get, until it feels right, it's and like that can be really time consuming. It's like the difference between a really good cover band and the real fucking deal, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, anybody can play the notes, right? Like, if you put in the time, 
you know, it, 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 technical musicians want to pretend that that's not the case, but like talent is a myth. It's just hard work. You know what I mean? It's just being. Uh, I don't mean like I'm saying. It's like, not a myth, but in terms, of, in terms of, I mean like in the way that people tend to think about talent. Right? Mm -hmm. People tend to think about talent in this mystical, like someone's just born this way and therefore it's unattainable to me. And that's fucking bullshit. You know, like I think the most accomplished musicians will tell you that talent is cool and it will help. It can give you a nice head start. But it will never come close to hard work and patience. Period. Nice. Like, fucking period. Like, yeah. Even Steve Vai himself, like, it might, might not be the most popular guitar player for your demographic, but um, incredible guitar player. And he's, he's, his favorite thing to say is if anyone played guitar as much as I did, they would be better than me. He's like, I was never talented. I just loved it. And I just did it more than anyone else, and that's why I'm amazing. No, that's a good name drop, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't just cover, cover slam metal, I yeah. cover all metal. Cool, awesome. great, great. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know. Why, why pick? Like, yeah, 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 we don't. Uh, and we try, hopefully that's clear in the music too. But yeah, it's like we, we made a bunch of decisions on this record. Like this record, uh, you know, we didn't use any hit replacement for the drums. We didn't use, like, the, the kicks are triggered, obviously, mm. because it's fucking death metal. And I love me some fucking death metal yeah. trigger kicks. Yeah. But all the toms, the snare, one, every single fucking hit on that record is Scott hitting that fucking snare. So you guys live recorded drums. Awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I know a lot of bands yeah. result to, to not recording live yeah. drums and it's either because of cost or, well, or, that's like, not, or what, what that's have a big you. Thing. I mean, a lot of bands uh, don't get uh, big budgets and stuff. Unfortunately, us being at the age that we are, we have uh, adult You guys jobs. look so old. Oh my God. So, well, I mean, there's, <laughs> Ancient. There's, a lot, there's a lot of people like in their early 20s, you know, still living at mom's house and stuff and they don't have the, uh, maybe the, the money to put into uh, the recording a quality record, um, or maybe they don't care enough. Um, and also, the superior drummer. I mean, you can get such great, such convincing tones that to get a better sound than what superior drummer can do, you really have to pay the big bucks. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like you're not gonna get. Like I get why bands do it, but if you're watching, don't. Yeah. <laughs> the temptation is there. Yeah. I get it. I get why. Um, and it's an incredible tool for writing. You know, to mm -hmm. like. It's the modern age. I don't. We don't try to sit on one side of the fence or the other. Be like, oh, there's one way to write music. Well, <laughs> we've know. been blessed with uh, one of the most fantastic drummers I've ever come across. I've been in many, many bands for many years, and uh, I always go back to Scott. He's just he's really, really, really consistent, and really creative. All right. So, any new stuff coming out that fans should be looking forward to, or non-fans that are going yeah. to become fans? Okay. What album they should be picking up? Yeah. So it, it really, we had an EP that came out on Everlasting Speed Records uh, last year. Yeah, end of November. Yeah. Um, called Painful to Find Their Death. Uh, and fortunate enough to get picked up on Century Media for that. And we have a record coming out. Can't say the name yet. No, no, yet. It's, I can say October. October of this year. Nice. From Century? That's pretty yeah. sick. It's done. The album's fucking done. Yeah. Well, what does it mean to be part of Century's? Umbrella now. It was it was very literally surreal. Yeah, it was one of those where I called problem. Adam. I got just, I just got the email from from our you know one of our A&R guys now there, uh, and it, it was funny because it was such a it was just such a casual like hey I'm Philip from Century Media I really dig the band I was hoping about to talk to about coming on. Yeah, I was like uh, sure I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll pencil you in. Conversation about it. Yeah, I mean, we were uh, entertaining a different label at the time, and then uh, Philip kind of came in right before we were about to ink that one, and, uh, and offered us uh, a really, a really handsome deal that uh, and was willing to work with us, and that's what we wanted was, you know, the the resources. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, Central that's... Media certainly does have that. I just want to be clear when he said handsome deal, we're not talking about money; we're talking about in terms of freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah, like things where we don't give a shit. Yeah. I want to make that very clear. Yeah. Still, that's on this trip. We're not we're not sitting here boasting about dollar signs. It's it's just about like we're able to maintain an incredible amount of artistic integrity. Yeah. Still. And working with Century Media, we weren't expecting that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like the other label we were talking with was a little smaller, mm -hmm. and we just thought we've been drinking the Kool Aid from other band dudes and bands. We were like, you know, the idea is the bigger the label, the tighter the noose, kind of thing. Uh, the, the the shorter of the leash you're mm -hmm. on. And uh, yeah, when I really fucking hit Century Media hard of like, hey, there's, we gotta have this, we gotta have like, gotta have say over this, I have to be involved in the packaging of our albums. Like, Cause Vitriol, I, I like to think part of why Vitriol is seeing success is because it's not just, it's the whole thing. Like it's very much like beyond, um, we're trying to do something beyond the scope of just writing um, songs. Well, that's of course the most important part. 
and they were cool with all of that. Uh, I was like, you know, I can't have that thing where we build something and then you guys tear it down by commercializing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, we can't fucking do that. Like, Vitriol got where we are by being uncompromising in our, like, in, this, in our sound. You know, it's like, we can't soften. But that's exactly why I don't ask us. Yeah. I'm just yeah. like, if, you, if you're a polished turd and you sound like shit live, I'm going to tell you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but that's... like, that Century Media doesn't control their bands like that. Mm -hmm. and, and I've seen it where big labels do. And then the band changes sound from yes. the original EP and LP days where they were DIYing it. And then it's kind of like, well, yeah. is this even the same band anymore? And it causes a lot of tension yeah. where they, they end up breaking up or uh, having lineup changes. Sure. It's easy, I think it's easy to fall into the gravity of being, and this is important for bands that aren't touring to know, is like, something shifts. It's very different when you're working your day job and you're going to your buddy's garage to work on your passion projects with your best friends. And then shift into being in a van seven days a week, touring, doing, you know, playing a show once in a while and the excitement surrounding that and doing it. People lose sight of why they started doing it. Long story short. Yeah. It's like dudes get jaded and they lose passion and they start going through the motions because like what the fuck else we, most of us started playing metal at 15 and none of us are, what, are we gonna go work at fucking McDonald's? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's Some like, people do. <laughs> yeah, they do, some people do. And, and honestly, it's probably the more, it's, it, it's probably the move that has the most integrity. Because if, if you don't, if it's not, if it's not 110%, don't fucking do it. Don't waste your time. Yeah. Don't waste death metal fans' time. Like, we deserve more than that. You answered you know my mean? next question already yeah. with this, so I was like, great. <laughs> don't have yeah. to ask it. Oh. Yeah, cool. So that's that's my position. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions I, I had for you guys. Thank that's you awesome. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. This has been Savage Annie with Into the Pit and Vitriol. We're out.